Questions? What's up, Sam? So basically, basically when you said nothing can separate us from the love of God, it I think of it as an analogy of basically God because because nobody's perfect in this world, we are all disabled compared to God. And so God would give us this IEP that for all of us that would basically that would basically be our, our kind of like ticket to heaven that Jesus had died for us through. I want to be clear that it's even even more than a ticket. Even more than that. God is with us now through the Holy Spirit. And he promises to be with us in the fullness of his presence forever when he makes all things new. It is a, one, one sec, we'll come to you just in one second. Um, the illustration of the, of the IEP, if it's, if it's helpful for you to think about it, I'd say that's good. Uh, but I, I, I would not. I don't, I don't want to limit what exactly the infinite, infiniteness of what God has done to any particular illustration. Um, if that's, if, do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, we're trying. We're trying to define an infinite thing in a finite way. There's always going to be some, some difficulties there. So I'd say go ahead and think about, think about it, it as an IEP. We can talk more about how it, we might unpack that a little more, but uh, we can do that at another time. Um, yeah, I think that's all, I, that's all I have to say there. Allie, you had a thought. Um, where are we phrasing it? So you know on the ocean how there's barnacles? Barnacles, yes. So Jesus is a barnacle and he's stuck to us. <laughs> we can't get him off even if we try. Yes, yes, <laughs> an, an, an infinitely suctiony barnacle. Sure. Yes, yeah, yeah. that analogy will work. Yes, <laughs> that, that, that's all good. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about how you're saying neither um uh, nor death nor life basically yeah and then i was also thinking about like how like imagine like if a kid ends up having some like health problem and dies when it's like one two years old mm -hmm. and they don't have time to know jesus so what happens do they go to heaven or not that's always a fun question <laughs> <laughs> Um, the question, so the question essentially breaks down to a, a person, whether very young or otherwise impaired, who does not have the cognitive ability to put their faith in God uh, before they are taken from the world. Can that person be saved? That's the question, right? I'd say absolutely that person can be saved. Uh, how that works? I don't know. That's, that's, that, I chalk that up to the mystery and the power and the mercy and the justice of God. I, 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 believe, that, I believe that our God is completely just. I believe that our God is completely merciful. I believe that our God is completely merciful. And so whatever happens to the, the spirit and body of that individual, I believe is all of those things, just, merc just merciful and loving. Um, how it works, I don't know. But we, we have comfort, exactly. We have comfort knowing who our God is, omnipresent, omnipowerful, or omnipotent and omniscient. It's a great question. I'm sorry I didn't have a better answer. That's fine. Sam. Near the end of your sermon, you said something about for us to reflect on on something this coming week. And I don't know what it was because you just mentioned it as an it. So uh, it's a good, great question. Thank you for asking me to clarify. Um, ask yourself these two questions. Do I, do, I, do I believe that there is nothing that exists, anything, that can separate me from the love of God. Do, do I believe that? That's question number one. Question number two is, how would anyone know? Like when someone meets me, when someone is talking with me, how would they know that I believe that? That there is nothing that can separate me from the love of God? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, I can write it down for you later as well. And you can think okay. About it. Great. Other questions? Oh, I was also thinking um, about how you were saying God has control over demons, but also Satan's like the highest demon among demons. So Satan has control over demons. Wait, which one basically has control? Over demons? I'll put it this way. Uh, let's see. So if you if you're at school 
and <laughs> you're homeschooled, never mind. Uh, let's say you're out, you're out in public, you're doing a 4 H thing, all right? Okay. Let's say uh, somebody there who, who, is, who is over you, and again, I, I would not suggest that anyone at 4 H would be a morally dishonest, but let's just say someone who has authority over you there says, um, you know, go and kick that dog, all right? Just hold on, hold on with me. Uh, or maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah, go and kick that dog. That's, that's perfectly fine. Um, that's not fine to kick dogs, but that's a good question. <laughs> so a person there says, go and kick that dog. Then your, 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 your parents show up and they say, stop kicking the dog, right? Who has greater authority over you? Then it'd be my parents. Right. And I'd say that's the same for demons, where Satan, Satan is, is driving demons and, and ordering them in his own power to, to do various things. Uh, and then when God, in his wisdom, in his timing, orders them to do something else, they cannot resist it. They must do as God tells them. That makes sense. Yeah. He has a leash on them, too. <laughs> <laughs> More, the most powerful leash. Right, yes. <laughs> he has the greatest cookies of the omnipotent. And so then the, then the question obviously becomes, why doesn't God stop all demons from doing anything? And the answer, again, we say is, that is not for me to know. It's above my pay grade. It is uh, all I'm called to do is I'm not called to understand all the machinations of the spiritual realm. I'm called to trust the Lord in them. Because God's the plan. Yes. I think the uh, one of the biggest questions is when we're talking about God, we're talking about infinity. <laughs> yeah. I'll and, be all. And it, it's a very hard concept to get until you take the time on a clear night and lie on the dock yes. and look up at the heavens and they go on forever and ever. As you can't as see it during the days. It's, it's hidden from us. But at night, when the light is gone, you can see the infinite creation, and and you can't deny it. I think that's perfect. Again, neither height nor depth. You look up into the infinite, the the, the near infinity of creation. Um, how much more? How much more then is there to understand of how to worship the Lord? For He He, he made it. He is larger than, and He is the Father of and Lord over all of it. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. I was also just thinking about that and how if God's, if basically a bunch of not so great things are happening to you, sometimes it's the greatest opportunity and way God shows it himself to you. Mm -hmm. Trust me. I would sometimes say. I just feel like uh, God is kind of like the biggest dad in the world. <laughs> basically, it, it'll be good for you. It builds character. Well, well, there's there's a reason he's called the father. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on your chest. Uh, and what and you have been blessed with a wonderful father, but we rejoice even more that our God is even greater than your dad. <laughs> oh man. Yeah.